Welcome to the Earth Science Classroom. Today, looking at the Earth's interior, and particularly looking at the lower mantle, or we call the mesosphere. And meso means uh, middle, so this part here, right here means uh, middle. So it's the middle part of the Earth, really, and it's the largest area within the the mantle. So the mantle is in two parts: the upper mantle and lower mantle. As as we discussed in previous uh, videos, the upper mantle includes the Asthenosphere, lithosphere, and within the lithosphere, we have the two uh, separations in crust, both oceanic and continental. So we have this divide, and the lower mantle is the mesosphere. Now, the mantle in, in general is a very large, the huge amount of the Earth's interior. It equates for around 84% of the interior volume of the Earth. The crust is very, very tiny. Lithosphere, asthenosphere are are very small portions, and the core is around 15%, 14% of volume. But that's different to the uh, the mass. But in terms of the mesosphere we're looking at today, it is a very large proportion. Over half of the Earth's interior is the mesosphere. About 55% is the mesosphere. And it goes from 660 kilometers down to 2,900 roughly. Those uh, values may change, those depths may change. There's some different textbooks or channels you look at, but generally 660 or 2,900. So let's look at the, uh, the first bit. Let's look at this general characteristics. There we go. All right, so first, let's take the geotherm. All right, how does temperature react within this layer going from this depth of 660 kilometers uh, 2100 kilometers and basically you know starting to enter the outer core so the temperature starts at around 1600 degrees celsius which is above the melting point of most minerals or all minerals on earth but because of the um, large amounts of pressure lithosite pressure these rocks generally stay thin now the sphere, don't forget has a um, a low velocity zone, which is between one percent of five percent of the asthenosphere, which would be melted. Will go above the solidus line and become melted. But the rest of the asthenosphere is pretty much just solid. But it is plastic, and it can be deformed, and therefore we get convection currents. Now, as what we know with mesosphere, we don't really get. I mean, some models do discuss the the, the um, origin of convection currents being at the core mantle boundary down here, uh, but most of them uh, really concentrate on the asthenosphere. The bottom temperature towards the core, start of the core, is 2,750 degrees Celsius. So we are increasing, there's a range there of about 1,100 degrees Celsius. So there's a large increase in temperature going from the top to the bottom of the mesosphere. Now we can add in the pressure. So the pressure goes from at the top 660 kilometers, uh, around 3.4 million PSI, which is kind of incredible because that's per square inch of the rock in terms of confining pressure and lithosphere pressure, 3.4 million pounds. That's, that's crazy. And it goes down to about 19.7 million PSI. Now, the corresponding density is going to be not really much different. So around 5.5 rounds per centimeter cubed down to around 5.7. So we have an increase in temperature, a pretty you know, substantial increase in temperature, well above any melting point, or it starts well above any melting point of known minerals, down to 2,700 degrees Celsius at the core mantle boundary. Even though it's nearly three times as hot as the mineral's melting point, as you see, the density is going to increase. So you have the amount of mass in a given volume actually increase. Um, basically increasing. So you have a higher density and that corresponds with a much greater um, pressure at each level. So the main characteristics, which would be 
obviously the geotherm, the pressure, and the density are all linked. So all of these are linked to the conditions. And unlike the crust, this is pretty much going to be a vertical distribution that we are looking at different depths and looking at different conditions. Now, it depends on how the minerals react to each condition based on the pressure and the temperature and how each um, minerals crystal structure is going to change or if it's going to change based on these three characteristics. So let's discuss composition. So the mantle in general is going to have a composition of pyrotite, which is that ultramafic or ultramafic igneous rock and very coarse grained. And that is a general one. Obviously, that is really to do with the lithosphere, asinosphere, and maybe the top part of the mesosphere. However, because we're looking at the in, in intense pressure that is, is exerted on the rocks at this depth, something actually kind of cool changes. In general, the whole earth is made up of iron, magnesium, silicon, and oxygen. Now, obviously, uh, these two silicate minerals are mostly in the upper mantle, especially concentrated in the vast lithosphere. And then you have the iron and uh, magnesium now depends on where you are. Maybe at the crust, you're at a mid ocean ridge where you have more of the uprising of that lower uh, plume and, and convection current, um, bringing up the, the deeper kind of ma uh, magma, which contains more iron and magnesium. Mostly, this is the lower mantle. And the presence of iron uh, does affect the different um, chemical reactions that go on under certain pressures and temperatures. But what you have is, you have uh, pyrotite as the main one. And other, like things like olivine, as the, one of the main minerals that is going to only melt, really, according to Bowen's reaction series, at the hottest temperature, so this is pretty much prominent. Olivine and, and peroxine are pretty prominent um, elements or minerals within this, this layer. And because of the intense pressure, it will cause a phase change within the mineral or within the rock. Now, when you think of phase change, you might think of state of matter from from a liquid to a solid uh, or a gas. But in terms of uh, phase change, we're discussing solid to solid change. Now, what does this mean? It means that maybe the dimensions of the crystal structure have changed. Maybe the distance between the ionic nuclear uh, ionic bonding has changed, or the amount of bonds have changed. Therefore, it's changing the shape and the structure. But you're looking at um, basically changing the crystal structure. And because of the pressure, everything gets squeezed a bit closer together. So when you add in perhaps another element or mineral to the, to the mix, everything gets squeezed together. Everything is more compact. So, for example, uh, let's look at olivine, which is magnesium and iron, uh, silicon oxide as well. Uh, this really happens in the transition zone. This starts to uh, change or have a phase change from solid 
to solid and start changing its crystal structure at the the um, the TZ zone, basically in the asthenosphere, and it really begins to be prominent going into the mesosphere. And what happens is it actually changes its structure and turns into what's called a spinal or spinal group. Now, these groups are very tightly packed, organized, not uh, a far uh, smaller distance between the atoms because of the pressure. Again, down to nearly 20 million PSI at the bottom of the core mantle boundary. And what happens is uh, this iron-rich silicate mineral now turns into different kinds of, let's say, uh, perovskite minerals, and stoshevite minerals. These are all going to be the, the adapted or under pressure changes that occur Within the within the mesosphere, due to the incredible pressures that it's under, and these pretty much are the composition of this area. Now, again, this is not completely fully known for certain. These are just very very educated guesses based on uh, experiments done on the surface, trying to replicate uh, the temperature pressure and the changes in the structure of these minerals. Um, however. Um, you know, we are pretty certain that that is along the lines of what happens. So we are going to discuss um, the lower part of the mantle and the core mantle boundary, which is very important um, in a different video. So please check us out on that one. And if you like this one, please subscribe. Again, it's the Earth Science Classroom here to uh, advise, help, guide you on the tour of the Earth sciences and everything to do with the earth.